place in this last nationals. Um, they are one of the top 10 group piece finals teams in the nation. I want you to please put your hands together for Puro enough to be able to handle the amount of people who won't respect you or, or your time or your work. work. Yes, this is work. Try not to think about how hungry you are. No, you will never get paid enough for the amount of effort you put in. Mark down hours of your time. Try not to let the onlookers see your disappointment as they walk away without buying anything again. <laughs> Don't cry. Don't think about rent or bus fare or the fact that you missed work for this. Try not to think about how hungry you are. Remember, poetry is currency for the truly wealthy. The peacemakers. The movement shakers. Be convinced. This is not going to be easy. The grass on this road knows more wind than souls. You, you have, have to focus. focus. Don't fantasize about being head over heels passionate about accounting. Ignore everyone who tells you your efforts taste like empty stomachs. Spend like debt. And, and live, live like fleeting dreams. dreams. Make a half-hearted promise to prove them all wrong. Get, get a little hungry, get a little ambitious. Claim you will chase your dreams across continents and starve to death if it means you can feed someone's inspiration. Know your self-worth, and if you don't think you're self-worthy, keep working. Dredge through the mediocrity it takes to survive in this world, and then realize how unrealistic art as a career is. Give up. It's easy. Try to get head over heels passionate about accounting. You'll say it's just temporary. Until you get back on your feet. Make excuses. Settle for less. Get, get a day job. Hate your coworkers. Hate your boss. Hate yourself a little. A lot. But, but, but this is life, right? Right. Right? Right? Right! right. Right, fuck this on every white picket fence, lulling you into complacency. Remind all those blue colors of their Excel spreadsheet waterfalls and their beach sunset screensavers. Look, no one is ever head over heels passionate about accounting. Quit your job. Quit, quit making excuses. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. Pick up a pen, a brush, an instrument, and bust ass. So scream your light. Streak your hope. Build sunbeams out of all this dark. Create. Think about how hungry you are. Hungry for change. A shift in awareness for answers this world has come up short on. And it may not pay the rent, but it'll build a home in your soul to never regret what you do. Fuck the moon and the stars and the ends of the cosmos. This world is enough and it is waiting. So, so eat up. Gorge yourself. Fill yourself up with words, color, texture, and laughter. Fill yourself up with hope, understanding, and appreciation for this world. Fill yourself up till you burst art from your seams. Fill yourself up until you're so full, you forget all about how hungry you are. Woo! Alright, thank you guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Yeah. That, is, that is a feature piece we like to do for all the artists out there. Uh, I'm going to keep it going with an indie. Oh, if you like that shameless plug, if you like that poem, we have it on a CD back there, which you can purchase. And chat books, all that good stuff. Okay, guys? This poem's a little bit more serious. I hope that's okay with you guys. Woke up that morning, head overhung, holes in your arms and in your soul. 
ash in your mouth from kissing tombstones. You see, we have never been afraid of death because the lackluster sentiment of who we have become is the essence of the bottoms that we hit. You see, being an addict requires a lot of theatrics. And some might confuse this for magic, the way we vanish like rabbits, but these hat tricks, these illusions, they all take place in our mind. So when it's relayed to the present tense, you can clearly recognize that we are not magicians, we are minds. And most people see a mind trapped in a box that is not there and wonder why he just doesn't step out as if somehow making this obstacle more tangible will make this density any less devastating. The density of this drama is draining. Because like a mime, an addict cannot speak forfeiting his ability to ask for help, substituting it for a substance that claims to give us substance. And most days, we paint our face with regrets, a white wash to match the emptiness inside. You see, like minds, addicts seem to be stuck in a purgatory, caught between life and death, a spirit pantomiming, closed lips, lost in the movement. And that morning, God whispered, have you had enough yet? Or was it the devil? You see, seeing double has its cons because perspective is the only thing you can rely on. I remember the vacancy, the silence of the dust settling. You see, there is no room for acceptance. It's like being suspended in the vacuum of space and mistaking it for heaven. I asked you, is it worth the pain? You said, what pain? You see, like a mime, it's all a play. One act, camouflage yourself in the backdrop of your hopelessness. Convince yourself, your only audience to applaud when you can't quit. Every day an encore that you must endure because being an addict takes commitment. Like insanity, you're committed. Looking for loopholes in these invisible lassos we straightjacket ourselves in. See, it isn't easy when street performing is your only purpose. So allow this dullness to absorb your ambition. Allow this numbness, this disease to wither your intestines and all your good intentions. All the while keep up this play, all the while keep up this show, this one man play, this one act show, convince yourself that you are not a ghost and allow the drug of your choice to enter your bloodstream. You see, it's a lot easier for an addict to die when no one can hear you scream. Um, what's up guys? So while my teammate makes her way up here, never mind, she's up here. <laughs> um, I, I know, she called the gold mic, just so you guys know. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, we're gonna do a group, another group piece for you guys. Um, this particular piece is super emotional for the both of us. I know that for a fact. Switching over to the other mic. Oh, and it already works, awesome. Um, so I really hope you guys enjoy it. I got one thing to say. So I know it's Wednesday and shit, and it's cloudy and it's been raining, but y'all, let's let's like pump up the energy. Yeah! Yeah! This is like slam style poetry. So if you hear something you like, cheer. Can we cheer? Yeah! If you hear something you don't like, you can still make noise. Like we, that's what we. It's fucking late and we have day jobs. Like we that feed off work. the energy you All give right. us. You got, see, he's got. Right. <laughs> On cloudy days, silver linings are usually enough to keep me grounded, but today, I can feel myself being pulled faster and faster into the blackness. The darkest parts of my mind stuck, stuck in this tunnel of suicidal thoughts. So when I saw the light, I went willing. Whether it beckoned me or, or I beckoned it, I am still unsure. unsure. The universe awoke before me and, and I, I found myself scattered. Like the dust of a shattered, shattered celestial body pressed against the cosmos. And in that moment, I decided, no. I will not find home in the wind. I'm not part riptide, part wane or drift. This place will forget my name. I know that now, but when it does, 
its scars from this fight will breathe. As, As I am, am learning, learning to, this labor will grow me fruitful. I am still learning this. This, this world does not hate me. I do matter. Hey, apathy. Hope and I have been talking. We're well, having a hard enough time attempting to survive without your shitty fucking attitude. A couple of days ago, my mind whispered a word stronger than I am. Quit. And it wasn't how the words sat like stale rainwater in the pores of my fortitude that scared me. But how I reveled in it. How I allowed it to dance on my skin like downpours after deep drought. Sometimes relief tastes bitter. I don't usually cry for help these days, but when my son is blotted, I do put people on notice. Apathy on notice. Get the fuck out. Hate on notice. Hate, hate, hate. I find you strong. Persistent. Determined, but your aim sucks. You are for repugnancy. See injustice, double standard. Hell, new music of politicians. Hate, you, you are for something greater than self. A couple of years ago, you could find me preaching sobriety <clears throat> until my last breath would bathe me in DMT and sail me into further. Now I can't find sobriety outside of a low paycheck. Universe, teach me not hatred. Instead, teach me its determination. Universe, teach me fight. Teach me fear. When I came to my father with my first black eye, he told me the size of the fight in the dog is greater when he has no choice. And I am tired of choosing to allow you this. Universe, fight me. Universe, fear me. This body, like so many others, is teeming with cosmos. Universe, apply your pressure. Leviathan you, gaudy with dead stars. Present me your grandeur, and I will match you my big bang. My here, my now, my resounding no! I will not go silently into your night. I refuse to allow my fingers to hand you my life. So send me your test, universe, for I am ready to learn. This is the part of the show where I interrupt the features. What do y'all think of Puro Slam so yeah! far? Stop. Well, don't worry, they got more poems to read for you. We do, we do, we do. Um, but before they do, or while they do, I'm gonna pass around the tip jar because if we enthusiastically support art, that means with our pockets too. Uh, and we wanna make sure that Puro Slam not only can get back to San Antonio, but come back to visit us again. Again and again and again. And last time I guess you did, because you're here. True, again. and we, we were able to make it. So yeah. we need you guys to help us make it again. Thanks, guys. Yeah! You guys. Yeah, give a round of applause to yourselves, because y'all are dope as shit. They also have March 1st. How much is it? What do y'all have, y'all? Uh, we have CDs, we got books, we got hugs. Uh, they are ten dollars each. Only ten dollars. Ten dollars. You can't afford not to buy it. True. Also, if you get them together, it's fifteen dollars. Yeah, our math isn't good because we're poets. Um. All right. So moving on to the poetry, ladies and gentlemen. One of like. This next poet is absolutely fucking amazing. I consider her family a lot more than I consider her a teammate. So I need all of you guys to clap like you're at a family reunion and your cousin's coming up to do some shit. Yeah, yeah baby, put your hands together for Tilted. Yeah. That was the sweetest introduction. I was like getting emotional. It's like, oh, it's so true. I love you. Okay, thank you all so much for having us. This is such a beautiful venue. Uh, I'm getting married next month. And, uh, so that guy that just did a poem up here. So, so what? Oh my God, it's already November. It's happening this month. But we got some shit to do. No, but it just like, I want to get married here. I wish I could. It's beautiful. I know. He marries people. Okay, change your plans. We'll talk about it after. Okay. I have a two-year-old son, but some days he's more 
fire engine, then two-year-old all shiny and defiant. He wails for his heart's truest desires at the top of his lungs, and I can't help but admire his sense of self-worth. More instinct than courage, more knowing than thinking, more telling than asking, and some days it is more than I can handle. On those days, I am more tornado than mother, all wrath and fury. More impulse than courage, more guessing than knowing, more yelling than asking on those hard days. I try to remember him as he was in the hospital, all brand new, newborn, eight pound baby boy with thirsty eyes that drank in the whole room more miracle than human, and more mine than the world. And I remember how badly I wanted him before he was even conceived. That was more imagination than preparation, I guess, because there are hard days when my tone of voice is more battle than example, when I am more lit fuse than lullaby, more feet stumps and eye rolls than cheek kiss and hand holds, when I am more tornado than mother, so I'll attempt to remember him as he was in the hospital. The day after our car accident, all bruised and confused, eight month old baby boy with limp arms and a monitored heartbeat that sang out to the whole room, more miracle than human, more warrior than child, and there I was, more tornado than mother, more worry than sleep, more prayer than thought, and more helpless than any mother should ever have to feel hearing my son cry and not being able to pick him up, but singing to him and witnessing his brain waves respond on the EEG monitor attached to his head. Those were our hard days, so when we were released from the hospital, we were more survivor than victims, more units than individuals, and now we do have hard days. When he is more fire engine than two-year-old, and I feel my winds start to blow chaos, tornado mother rising inside of me, so I try to see him for what he is, more miracle than human more warrior than child, and suddenly I am more cool breeze, more deep breath, more calm than storm, and I realize there is so much more to being his mama than the phase we are in right now, and there is so much more to this life than what it may seem. Thank you. Straight up, that poem made me cry real hard the first time I heard it, and it was intense. She just kind of sat us down in her living room and was like, I got some dope shit for you. <laughs> I'm sorry, this next poem is also really emotional, and I make jokes as a defense mechanism. It's true. We're, on, we're doing a lot, of, a lot of vulnerable stuff, guys. Really opening up to you guys. So thank you for being yeah. receptive, open, yeah, yeah. yeah. all of that. Honest ther therapist, kind of. True. Um, yeah, so because we're opening up, if you want to come give us hugs, you could definitely do that. At least I can speak for myself, but yeah. Um, I'll, take, I'll take one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Um, I hope you all enjoy this next poem. It is new compared to everything else that we've read. Relatively new. Relatively yeah. new shit. Uh, what, the first time we actually read it on a stage was actually in our bout? At Nationals. So, at Nationals? Yay! Yeah. Yay! <laughs> and it helped us jump from third to first. So, yes! uh, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Growing up, it wasn't easy. The bitterness of his ice still lingers. Like the taste of ash and soot. I've grown, grown up, up under, under this passion. My father. The ideal concept. Six foot thundercloud of a man. Five eight sinkhole of a man. On bad days, he'd knock out his son. On good days, he would still be gone. 
This is the man who taught me to be a man. The man that allowed his fear to prevent him from picking up that phone. You see, he thought it was better to shapeshift into a ghost, a phantom. So although he is still alive, he haunts me. The man who allowed his cowardice to morph him into a monster. At night, his rage would bloom like full moon. Things to know when growing up with my father, without a father, he'll remind you, remind yourself, he is not perfect. He will be your first physical representation of God and his fear. You'll wonder, what about me? Makes him run, makes him mad, makes him forget what it means to be my dad. How you can be so quick to leave and never come back. I just wish you would come back. I know everything will be better if you just never come back. Growing up with my father, I spent so much time cleaning the scorch marks of my childhood, I never noticed that my mom bore the charred dressings of a lightning rod. My, my mother did her best to shelter me from the blistering cold of isolation, defrosting my soul when growing up without a father. Try not to notice all the milestones he sacrificed to the wind. Don't get caught up in the what ifs. Now, as a man, I have a crater in my chest, a good indicator of the impact you left on my life. But this land is not the only thing you left me from my father I inherited these fleeting feet these bleeding fists my days have spent fighting off your influence it feels so normal when, when fear feels so much like your father saying I love you I can feel my passion burn just as hot what if I scorch like he does engulf like he does burn like you were not his actions you were not his secrets you were not your father this is not your responsibility responsibility Responsibility. Well, what would I know about responsibility? This numbness is starting to solidify. I can hear the wind howling me home. I can feel my heart itching to run. What if I run? What if I run? You are not his choices. You are not his missed opportunities. You are not your father. And it's time to let him go. I'm so tired of living with his fear, his hate, and his neglect and paranoia. When growing up without a stable father, do not allow his instability to cause you to fall into depression. Allow yourself to find love. Stop wondering what it would have been like if he was here or gone. Stop imagining greener grass and grow. Forgive, not for him, but because you deserve that peace. Let my fists be rain, that they may fall and heal. Let my feet be seeds planted and steady. Let me be more than the man my father taught me to be. Uh, that felt tingly. Wow. Um, so that was really, really dope. So I need that energy to start there and then start rising. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the four 2016 co-Grand Slam champions of San Antonio. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's put go. your hands together for Diamond Mason. Yeah. He got so hype his boat fell off. All right, so I was deciding whether or not I wanted to do this piece tonight, and then Safi said something about petty shit, so. <laughs> There's a lot of feels in this poem. Exes be tripping and stalking and showing up at events and shit. Whoa. I know, right? Get out! <laughs> I'm not here. Oh, he's, okay. he's too broke to drive to Houston. <laughs> Tell me you remember me. Tell me it wasn't just a trick of the light in your eyes. Tell me that at the end of this tunnel wasn't just a bare bulb in front of a mirrored wall. Tell me I didn't fall, that it wasn't clumsy of me, that my heart is more than two left feet battling an accelerating beat. Tell me you love me, at least for a moment, and tell me of the moment and another and another. Tell me of the others. Tell me, was it the way her hair slid down her back like black satin on snow? Tell me, it reminded you of a place you'd never been before. Tell me how easy it is to see love in a postcard picture when you are stuck at home. Tell me she was a postcard picture. A place you long to love in real times with hands open like an over-eager child. Tell me I was cereal on Sunday morning 
Too real for you to love without wanting somewhere else to run off to when the days start running slow. Tell me I was too much monotonous love, like too much mundane in places of magic, like too much like every day, less like forever. Tell me you thought about forever, that for a second you saw it but didn't want it. Don't tell me you tried because you didn't. Don't tell me I was the one because I wasn't. Don't tell me you wrote music for me when you wrote it for her first and then changed the title and had the audacity to call it mine. Tell me it wasn't mine, that it was never mine, that your heart was made of land and mine was made of buoyant wood. Come land on your shores and think you so beautiful, so casually uninhabited, so controlled by savages that I, its only savior, tell me of another the way your eyes did before you left. I could read her between your smile lines. Tell me she was bronze in the morning sun, something beautiful. Tell me you fell into her eyes like black lakes and waited there. Tell me you knew I could feel the ripples of her water in my well. Tell me when you drank from me that you could taste the bit of her you left drowning there. Did you know he can taste it too? The bitterness of her on my lips when I tell him I love him. To him, it tastes like black coffee and my smile is sugar. To him, I am chocolate goddess wrapped in warmth and light. To him, I am the everyday and the eternal. To him, I am still trying to give myself without giving her and you and them along with me. Tell me if you still have a hard time digging me out from under your fingernails. Does the dirt we dug up still fuck up your clean laundry? Tell me, do you have any clean laundry left? Or maybe she does it all for you so you don't have to look at the messes you've made. Tell me something other than silence, other than I don't know, other than sorry, you're not fucking sorry tell me the truth even if that truth is you couldn't love me enough if you tried even if that truth is you never loved me enough to try even if that truth is you mistook being loved for being able to love in return and in turn got greedy got selfish became addicted to the elixirs of female flesh tell me have you picked me out of your teeth yet or can she still see me in your mouth when you smile Topic close to our hearts, so we hope you enjoyed this piece. I am alcoholism, and I am responsible for 88,000 deaths of Americans each year. This is the story of one of my victims. I grew up in a relatively normal family. Sure, my dad would drink and sometimes my mom, but they tried their best to raise me right. 
However, I always felt as though there was something missing, like the whole world was in on this joke that I didn't understand and I never knew why until, until the day I had my first drink. And I felt as though I was flying and I finally got the joke and it was funny and life was fun. When I would drink alcohol, I could taste it on my tongue, feel the burning of my throat until it tingled down my spine and numbed my fingers and toes. I felt invincible. It started off casually at first. Drinks at the bar with my friends, I'm but friend. I started to notice that they couldn't keep up with my drinking. Light so weights. I would just take shots at home before going out. This is fun. Until my pregame became my main game and I would hardly go out at all. I would just stay home and drink. I'm your friend. I would drink to relax after a long day. I would drink when I was happy or celebrating. This is fun. I would drink when I was sad or feeling depressed You're until pathetic. eventually I was drinking constantly. It's the first thing I thought about when I woke up each morning until I kissed my bottle goodnight each night. But it wasn't, wasn't that, that big, big of a problem. problem. Sure, sure, I lost a few jobs here and there, a few dings in my car and a few holes in my self-esteem. A few emotional wounds I was pretty sure would scar over if only I could quit picking at the stabs. But at least I wasn't doing harder drugs. Alcohol is legal after all. Every American goes through this phase in their youth. And furthermore, I deserve it. I've earned it. And honestly, I need it. it. Without it, I am nothing. It, it got, got to the point to where I couldn't even recognize myself in the mirror anymore. And then I became somebody that I never wanted to be. My family stopped talking to me. My friends disowned me. And I made some mistakes so huge that I became disgusted with myself. But I still couldn't quit. I was blinded by my insanity. I couldn't hear the sense talked into me until eventually I decided maybe I should get to grow. But who would want to help me anyways? I'm pathetic. I'm worthless. This is all my fault. Might as well have one more drink. As they say, you only live once. Give it up for Pluto Slam one more time. They showed you why they made it to Group Peace Finals right there. They will have, um, they do have merch for sale. Usually this would mark the end of our show, but um, I have an idea. We haven't done this in a while. We're gonna do something called ad lib. Okay? And you may ask, what's ad lib? I'm glad you asked. Adlib is where we welcome poets and non-poets to the stage to perform impromptu poetry using three words, any three words of the audience's choice. So I'm going to welcome up people right now if they'd like to participate in Adlib.